that um, bogong moths migrate from southeastern Queensland um, across this whole mountain range down to the Snowy Mountains from the Darling Downs in Queensland. Uh, so they're flying over here and we can easily catch them in this area. So we have a big light trap that we use for catching moths uh, here and then we use those moths in our experiments here as well and we can also live here in the cabins of the national parks from Queensland yeah. and then uh, they are heading to the snowy mountains and they'll spend three or four months in alpine caves there yeah. in a very dormant state called yeah. it's called Easterbation it's like a summer version of hibernation if you like. the end of the Australian summer at the beginning of the autumn they, they emerge from the caves and fly back to Queensland and so you get another big flight of moths over the Mount Kaputa National Park in March and April. There's another big peak comes through at that time. And they're heading north instead of south, obviously. The question we have is how an insect can hatch from, a, from, its, from its pupa, after being an egg and a larva, how it can hatch out as an adult, and then immediately fly south to the snowy mountains and find these isolated caves, having never been there before, and having had no body to show them, like a mother. Because the, every moth's mother has died about three or four months earlier after laying the egg that the moth actually hatched from or developed from. And, and so that's our main question. How do they find their way all the way to the Snowy Mountains having never been there before? And work out exactly how to find these very small and isolated caves and know where to go. And then how do they do all that again in, re in reverse yeah. when that's the end of the summer? Um, we've got some data that suggests at least, um, uh, preliminary data that suggests that they might be using um, a magnetic sense like nocturnal birds. So that's what we're testing here with this equipment. We're actually manipulating the magnetic field of these moths. But what we're attempting to do is see if we can alter their flight direction in this apparatus. Large storage of fat, um, which they are using for the long journey south, uh, you know, for an animal this size, this is a bit like us going to Europe yeah. on our own steam <laughs> to travel that distance, yeah. about a thousand kilometres. And this forms a beautiful symmetric pattern around the sun that some animals can use as a compass oh, okay. if they can see it. And yeah. most insects, probably all insects actually, can see this light yeah. in the sky and use it as a compass for navigation. Uh, so it's a kind of like a GPS system. Now we don't think the moths have this. So yeah. They're probably just using the field as a, as a, as a compass yeah. and not much else. Um, but that's impressive enough, yeah. we think. Yeah. Not just from northern Queensland, yeah. but there are also populations that come from western New South Wales as oh, well. Okay. And they're probably returning there almost certainly after the summer, just like the Queensland ones. Okay. Yeah. And we even have a little bit of evidence now that suggests that the moths from Queensland have their own special caves oh, okay. and the moths from Western New South Wales have yet separate caves. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. State of origin caves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I started the project expecting to find that these um, uh, nocturnal moths, these bogong moths, were going to be using celestial cues like the sun and, sorry, the moon and the stars okay. and the polarised light polarization pattern of light around the moon yeah. as a mechanism for navigating to the snowy mountains yeah. but I very quickly came to realize that it was probably not an easy thing to do because these cues are very changeable at night unlike the Sun which yeah. is very predictable during the day these other cues like the moon and the stars they, mo they move enormously during the night yeah. for a, a bogong moth which needs to migrate all night these, these cues are really unreliable yeah. and that's when I got, we got the idea that maybe they're using a magnetic sense yeah. instead. Just let me touch the screen so it wakes up again. Okay, oh it just did already. You yeah. did, yeah, did it already? Well, I can change it back. Okay, you watch that needle. Yeah, beautiful. And change it back again Henrik. You've got complete control of the magnetic yeah, field in there. Yeah. These are actually the key species for the Snowy Mountains because okay. uh, I, I've calculated that, that there's at least each year about two billion moths coming in mm. and everything from the ravens to the foxes to uh, the small mice to uh, uh, the spiders to the skinks, everything yeah. you know, feeds on bogong moths. Yeah. Um, so they really are a key 
key species to the, the life. I mean, the mountain pygmy possum wouldn't exist up on the uh, oh, okay. on the mountains if it didn't have the, the bogong moss coming in each spring to yeah. uh, you know, give them a bit of a feed before, uh, <laughs> you know, when they come out of hibernation. Yeah.